Roots Group introduced a new small car in February 1970 called the Hillman Avenger. It was designed by Roy Axe, who went on to design classics like the Horizon and Alpine, and he went to work for Rover. He notably penned the XX or Rover 800. The Avenger was a groundbreaking new car. It was bigger than the Ford Escort and it was designed to take on the Mark II Cortina. But when Ford brought out the Mark III Cortina later that year, it was much bigger and it kind of left the Avenger sort of halfway between the two. So the bigger Hunter ended up, because it had a bigger engine, ended up competing with the Cortina, while the Avenger competed with the Escort. The styling was very much of its day. It took the American Coke bottle styling and incorporated it into this design. The Avenger itself came with two engines initially, a 1250cc and a 1500, which by 1973 had been uprated to 1300 and 1600. The car on the whole was fairly basic, even front disc brakes were optional in Europe where the car was also sold as a sunbeam in, in continental markets. The Avenger itself was pretty successful. The, the car went on to be produced by Chrysler in Europe with a midlife refresh in 1975-76 until 1981 when by that time it was owned by PSA and sold under the Talbot brand. In the early days, in June 1970, just a few months after the car was launched in Britain, plans were announced for an American version. Chrysler in the US had no small car to offer. In a period where small cars were starting to gain traction, courtesy mainly of cars like the VW Beetle and then the emerging Japanese companies as well. Chrysler wanted in on that action and that would compete with other British products from Vauxhall at the time and also the Ford Cortina which was had been sold in the United States for some years. So it brought in a captive import, the Hillman Avenger, which it branded as a Plymouth Cricket. Now, what made the Plymouth Cricket interesting is the fact it was the first four-cylinder Plymouth for 40 years since 1932. There were some notable changes to this car from the UK model. The first was standard front disc brakes, which were optional in the UK. And secondly, this could be optioned throughout the range with twin carbs and an automatic choke. Whereas in Britain, it was only the Avenger GT initially that had the twin carbs offering. And the automatic choke, I think, were basically relegated to the more upmarket models. That would prove to be ironically its downfall because the manual choke tended to be more reliable. The Plymouth Cricket was not a success in the States and like all British cars over here at the time with the likes of the Austin Marina it suffered generally from poor build quality and uh, a lack of focus on what was required for the North American market. In 1972 the station wagon version, which had just been launched in Britain, was also offered as a Plymouth Cricket as well. Some of them were 1972 models, and then the latter ones were all 1973 models, which were identified by bumper overriders, which the US government required on cars that year. The car was slow selling, as I said, and Chrysler decided to withdraw it from the American market in favour of a new small Dodge that it was building in conjunction with Mitsubishi. That turned out to be much more successful. So, towards the end of 1972, the Cricket 
was axed. And that was particularly bad news for the station wagon version, which had only just been launched months earlier. So those are particularly rare. In fact, all crickets are rare. Only 27,700 in total were imported into the United States. So we're talking Merkel Scorpio levels. I'm here with Rummy. He is the owner of this magnificent 1972 example pre-bumper overrider model. You can see that it's got the standard 7 inch seal beam headlights which were basically the same as were fitted to the upmarket UK cars but here they were mandated, sorry two 5 and 3 quarter inch uh, headlights um, because headlights were strictly mandated in the United States at that time the idea was is that you could replace any headlight for any car at any auto parts store you didn't have to go through a dealership per se this car has original paint this is the original paint with some hand sprayed areas <laughs> where uh, it had completely disappeared <laughs> after yeah. sitting in a gravel lot in Oklahoma but City for 30 years. Who doesn't love original patina? Indeed. The and patina the, is good. The, then the vinyl roof as well. Is, is this been replaced? Now, the US didn't really sell vinyl roofs on mm -hmm. the Plymouth Cricket. Right. I'm a big fan of the look of the Hillman Avenger GLS. Yeah. So I attempted and have attempted to make this into a fake Plymouth Cricket GLS. And the uh, C pillars have the GLS emblem on them. Mm -hmm. I put the GLS emblem on the trunk mm -hmm. and I had this um, vinyl roof treatment imported once again from East Kent Trim Supply Company. Uh, and I had it installed at my favorite auto upholstery store. So how long have you had this car and how did you come across it? I bought this car in late 2021 I uh, was in contact with a YouTube channel like yourself out in Kansas who had four of these and indeed had owned one of the four since 1975 wow. his father owned it originally he was um, an enthusiast and this was his best example and he I contacted him and he told me I've been looking for a Plymouth Cricket wagon for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I've never seen one. Mm -hmm. It's what I want. It's mm -hmm. my dream car. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I, owe, I know where there are two Plymouth Cricket wagons in one wrecking yard. They've both been sitting for 30 years. One of them is absolutely gone. Mm -hmm. If you tried to move it, it would fall in two. Mm -hmm. But the other one in Phantom Mist with a green interior is salvageable. I proceeded to buy that car from the wrecking yard. I made a deal with the man in, uh, in Kansas and we agreed to meet with two trailers equidistant from Charlottesville in Kansas, which happened to be Jackson, Tennessee, the hometown of the great blues singer Denise LaSalle. <laughs> and we, uh, we met and we traded cars and I drove back to Virginia and um, I started the restoration on this car. Fantastic, fantastic. So what, what aspects of the car have you restored? I mean, obviously you've put in the vinyl roof yourself, but interior wise, what have you done? To well, I would love to give you the picture to put up on YouTube yeah. of what the interior looked like when yeah. I got it. It Pretty was ratty. roached. Yeah. I mean, basically the heat in Oklahoma City and the sun is like a pizza oven. Yeah. And this car, sat for 30 years so the entire interior was dust almost so where did you get this interior from because these seats are fantastic They're well very, uh, actually the rear seats were savable those okay. are original to the car okay um i have put a little piece of vinyl over the top just to hide the the uh hole in the back there right uh the root the front seats are the original front seats but totally reupholstered. okay now the door panels come from another Plymouth Cricket. Now, the Cricket I bought or traded 
was a base model cricket from 72, which mean it didn't have the overriders. Right. M the, there are two types of cricket, the base model and the decor group. Mm -hmm. The base model has no indoor pockets. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of differences. The, the uh, decor package has a lot more to it. Yeah. The deck is a real stripper, the, uh, the base yeah. model. So I, I upgraded everything to decor package. Um, and these come from a cricket that came out of Tennessee that my friend in Pennsylvania owned. It's a parts car. And, um, yeah, this uh, cricket has a lot of parts from other crickets on it. Now, all North American crickets, they were the 1500s, right? Because Indeed. the 1600 yes. didn't come out until 73 yeah. after the cricket was axed. Yeah. So this has an automatic choke, you were saying? It does, and it's yeah. caused me terrible problems yeah. until just recently mm -hmm. when I got a young man who's a mobile mechanic to come up here and go through the system and he half rebuilt the carburetor, tuned everything up. Now this car starts on a button. These cars can be terribly unreliable. Well, and, and plus the fact that it's now, what, 53 years old? Yes. It was built, it would have been built in 71 for the 72 model year. Indeed. And, um, you know, a 53 year old car expecting that kind of work in this kind of heat, because here in the south, it's not cold. Is no. it, it's it's quite something. It's I can moist. I I can rec I recall my father had a a 1975 Hillman Avenger, and he got it new. And we would go on road trips as a family to the East Coast in high summer, which wasn't even this warm. And you know we had to sort of like watch out for any sort of overheating issues or anything yep. like that, as you did back then. And that's when they were new. Well, this one has, uh, I would estimate, about sixty-five thousand miles on it. Now, it was sold yeah. brand new in 1972 at Chrysler, at Rally Chrysler Plymouth yeah. in Muskogee, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. And you were saying that there are still old leaves stuck in the ventilation Down system. here are still a whole bunch of old leaves from the 80s Which... that fly out into the cabin every time I drive it. <laughs> and hopefully one day that will cease and I will end the pile of leaves. Now, did they put factory AC on these? You could buy them with factory AC. Yeah. Highly inadvisable to buy them with that. That would bring you down to about 45 horsepower. Right. This car has 57 without right. AC. 45 yeah. horsepower is not going to get you anywhere. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, putting the tw I have a twin carb set up that I took off the uh, wagon in the yard yeah. and a manual gearbox I have also taken from a, a yard cricket. So did the wagons all have the twin carb set all up? had twin carbs. That's interesting. And pretty much all of them had the Borg Warner automatic that this has. Right, right. But with a twin carb set up and a manual transmission, I am convinced this car will be more fun to drive. Yes, definitely. They because, handle beautifully. Yeah, that, that was the one of the Avengers key strengths was yes. its handling. And, uh, rally cars. It was, yeah. Rally was pedigree. Used, um, it was used in rallying, of course, in Group N, as I think as was. In the States, uh, the Plymouth Cricket was used in SCCA rallies as well, with some success. Yeah. So the press on regardless rally in yeah. Michigan, which it yeah, won. Yeah, press on regardless. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. Yes. I'm thinking of. Yeah. I've been particularly itching to come and see this car because it's one that emanates from my childhood. As I said, my dad had a Hillman Avenger, uh, Avenger, and it's the first one that I've seen in the states. And it's like when I see the likes of. Austin Marinas, for instance, or Ford Cortinas over here. It's just something that starts lighting my candle. Well, this car, I believe, through my research, is one of probably 10 roadworthy crickets in, in, in America. The, in, the, in the country. Yes. Yeah. That's, and that's possibly amazing. the very first one that's ever been restored. Yeah. I've never heard of anyone yeah. attempting to restore a Plymouth Cricket. So, so you were saying that you are betwixt and between when it comes to the paintwork, whether to leave this like original patina on it or yeah. um, get it repainted. Yes. I could go either way. Yeah. Right now, every time I'm at a car show, I ask people's opinion and pretty much... 90% of people have said, keep it like it is. But that could change in the next few years as well. The 90% could say, oh, repaint it. Because collectors in particular are fickle creatures. 
<laughs> and they they will change their minds. I mean, uh, when it came to restorations, full-on restorations were all the rage 30 years ago. Yes, But they now, were. original barn fine looks yes. are de rigueur. Uh -huh. So that could change again. Yes. Um, so, but I think it looks fantastic, um, Rummy, and uh, thank you for saving this car. Um, this is what we live for. And this is just up there with one of my favorites. So I'm now at the helm of this fantastic 1972 Plymouth Cricket. Here's the, here's the rub. I never even drove my dad's helmet Avenger and here I am in the States driving the federalized version. This is a real treat. This is a three-speed Borg Warner automatic. And we are back in the cemetery. Again, no power steering. Um, because I'm in someone else's car and I just want to take this nice and slow. So I can just get a good feel for it. Of the uh, the instruments, the, uh, what works? What we've got, we've got the, the voltmeter. That works. The oil pressure doesn't. <laughs> the fuel gauge doesn't. <laughs> Um, the, think, speedo the speedometer doesn't, and yeah, I no, believe the no, oil pressure gauge doesn't. The, that the is all to come. The coolant doesn't either, so almost like when it was new. <laughs> so it's a lot of work to source parts for a car that is this rare and this old. Funnily enough, there are more of these in wrecking yards than you might imagine. Yeah. It, only 50 miles from here, I found five in a wrecking yard. Yeah which is amazing really. I know there's another place like that in North Carolina and I, I want to visit some of these places in due course uh, because they would make really good video content. Well, get an early night and eat your Wheaties because going around wrecking yards, you've got to be fit. That stuff yeah. will mess you up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely have the Weetabix. <laughs> no, Wheaties, um, we're in America. I like Weetabix and I can get that here. So. Get your shreddies yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is just wonderful. Uh, the the wooden tri uh, laminate has been added afterwards. It wouldn't have had this as standard, and it didn't have the centre console as standard either. That's been added. And in America, they came as yeah. base model or deck or Yeah, that was basically the deluxe was the base model in Britain, and then uh, the super was the more at market model with uh, niceties like um, sort of plastic covered door handles that kind of luxury and then you got to the GT and the GT was ultimately replaced by the GLS and then the Tigers. The important thing with a car like this is that there are so few, was about 20 running did you say now? I believe there's only yeah. 10 roadworthy Plymouth, 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 Plymouth crickets, crickets in America. In the States. I, I used to live next door to a guy that had one of the last ones made that was never exported, that was a 73 with the big... Uh, that overriders. was unknown to me. Um, and but there is another one that's in the state, uh, that's in the UK uh, right now that was basically, again, never just never exported. But the important thing is that this runs and drives and gets places. Yeah. And, and it's something for people to look at and admire and enjoy. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's saved for future generations. One would that, hope. One would hope. Yes, I mean, I, yesterday I drove it a 168 mile round trip to a show first time has it driven that distance since 1989 and it performed faultlessly and I was ecstatic yeah. and you know that, that's what it's all about that's absolutely I mean showing people something they haven't seen before at a car show totally floats my boat I agree and um, this this car really is a testament to perseverance yeah we're going to wrap up there. Um, I really want to thank Rami for his time this Oh, weekend. I thank you for coming all the way and, from Ohio. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. This, for me, was almost like a pilgrimage just to see this car. So anyway, that's it from me. I'm Darren Walker, and this is Auto Atlantica.